Hello everybody, I'm back from Denmark. I just barely got back uh, a day or so ago. I don't know, I've been sleeping quite a bit. So uh, yeah, I guess I'll explain as to why I was in Denmark if you guys don't already know and uh, kind of the things that I was up to. This is going to be basically a two-part video. In this first one, I'm just going to be talking about the trip that I went on to Denmark and all the things that we kind of did over there. And then the second video is going to be more centered around Deep Rock and all of the new things that are coming up. So this will include Deep Rock Galactic Season 5, this will include Deep Rock Rogue Core, and this will also include Deep Rock Galactic Survivor to some extent, and just Ghost Ship games in general. Main reason why I'm splitting this up is because I figured these videos might be really long, depending on how long I decide to talk for. And another one is kind of just for the convenience of it, because I actually lost my bag in Paris, France, so I'm still waiting to get that to kind of show off the other things that I got while I was in Denmark, so... Yeah, that's why this is going to be like a two-part one. So a couple of months ago, I was actually messaged on Discord by uh, Jacob over at GSG, a ghost ship, and asked if I wanted to come and fly into Denmark to celebrate their sixth anniversary. I was on the live stream. I was the last person that was there for the, the interview type thing that we had going on uh, out of the five uh, YouTubers slash streamers that we had there, but there was seven content creators in total. So there was me, Drilling in the Name of, Lazy Maybe, Sniss, Explorian, Mist, and Dwarf Furious. And apparently Dwarf Furious was kind of the one who pulled the strings behind the scenes to get us there, so big shout out to Dwarf Furious. Thanks, man. Really appreciate that. All of these people were super cool to hang out with, too. I gotta hang out with all of them. And uh, if you ever wondered what they're like in real life, basically the same as they appear online. Um, I believe the only other person that I had directly spoken to, at least through like uh, Discord DMs and stuff, was drilling in the name of before this. So me and him kind of knew each other before this, but seeing each other in person was uh, a new experience and it was really, really cool. So once we got everything taken care of, I was flown out on the 26th, landed there on the 27th, although this was just a very easy flight to go through. So I flew straight out to Amsterdam, which was going to be my first stop, and luckily I got there even earlier than what was planned. So I had like a three hour layover originally, then it turned into a three and a half hour layover, which was fine. The Amsterdam airport was one of the better ones that I went to. It's set up a little bit strange when you first get there, but it's just kind of big. It's, it's actually kind of easy to navigate, so I didn't really have a problem in Amsterdam. And then I flew from Amsterdam over to Denmark, which only took like about an hour to get there. So that was also faster than what was uh, thought to happen, which was really cool. Then once I actually got to Denmark, made it to the hotel that we were staying at. The hotel was super nice. There's going to be some pictures up behind me too. I'm going to be showing that. There's also some DRG Survivor footage here in the back because I figured we'll have this for this video and then we'll have like some regular Deep Rock for the actual talk of Deep Rock Season 5 and Deep Rock Galactic Rogue Core. Got to the hotel and then found out that Explorian and Lazy Maybe were gonna go out for sushi. I wanted to go and hang out with somebody, so I went there even though I don't really eat sushi. I had a bunch of uh, interesting things there. Most of them were actually really good. I did like it, so that was pretty cool. Some of them were a little bit strange that I probably wouldn't necessarily order again, or maybe I'd order them a little bit differently. Because one of them was very much like, I didn't like it when I first tried it, then started liking it more, and then I kept getting like a weird amount where it's just like something was off about it. Lazy said it was probably like the rice paper there that was like messing with me. So it's like, yeah, probably. The sushi bar we went to was like two blocks away from our hotel, so it actually wasn't very difficult to get to. A lot of really convenient places around Copenhagen to get to, and Copenhagen wasn't very difficult to navigate either, which was really awesome, especially for me, who doesn't really live in a city, or near a city at all. <laughs> Actually, to get to the airport, I had to drive about two and a half hours to get there, so it, it's kind of out of the way, but it was really fun to go out for sushi. Uh, we misordered a little bit, because there was kind of a, a lack of communications there. Basically, everybody in Denmark speaks English, and speaks very good English, which is really cool. But um, at the sushi bar, we didn't really know what we were ordering because it had two different menus and we chose the sit-down menu. So they had ordered their own sushi rolls. I was going to order like a, a, a try platter thing, like try whatever the heck you want, and figured it was just for one person because it said it was for five servings. So I figured like I get to try a little bit of everything and they could help me eat whatever I didn't eat. That turned out to not be true. This was actually a five course meal per person so there was a lot of sushi to go around for everybody and then both Explorian and Lazy got their own like things of sushi too. Another problem that kind of popped up when I, I was going to hang out with them was like I don't know what Explorian or Lazy look like I hope they knew what I look like so that 
It was at least we could figure out where everybody was actually going, and it that turned out to be perfectly fine. I uh, went back to the hotel after that, and then I just crashed. And then the next day we were there was actually the first day that we were going to go to the ghost ship offices. Got up, and they said that you could have, like, free breakfast down there, too, at the hotel. But I didn't think it would be, like, a buffet. It's basically a breakfast buffet. It's just take whatever the heck you want. You just say what your room number is. And they had, like, so much food, and it was really good. And I ate probably too much stuff for breakfast right away, because I hadn't eaten very much that day for the plane, because I usually don't like to. Um just doesn't feel great if I eat a bunch of stuff and I'm on a plane for a long time. Uh, and then got to talk with, I think, almost everybody else there besides uh, Drilling in the Name of. So I got to speak with Sniss, uh, I got to speak with Explorian again. Lazy had already went over to the offices, he beat us there. And then I went to go and check to see if Lazy was still in his room since we hadn't seen him, or at least nobody knew where exactly he was. Uh, and ran into uh, Drilling in the Name of coming out of the elevator while I was going back up there to check. But yeah, it turned out he was already ahead of us, so we headed out and walked from our hotel over to the ghost ship offices. It was about a 20-25 minute walk for us. It gradually got faster the more we got used to actually going over there. And then we got to meet the whole crew, which was really, really cool. We got to meet Soren and Mikkel right away, the CEO and the lead game designer. I'm sure you guys know about these two. They were not what I was expecting for a CEO and lead game designer. They were way, way cooler than I would have thought. They basically just hung out with everybody like all the time uh, both with uh, their own staff and with us and it, it was really nice getting to talk to them we got to talk to basically everybody that worked there at ghost ship which was really cool everybody there was super cool super nice super chill and was like very very excited to actually be there and be working on the stuff and they seemed to be pretty happy that we were there too which was really awesome generally all the people i met in denmark were actually like super cool anyway just like random people on the street were as well they were all extremely nice and uh, yeah it, it was actually a really lovely country to go to i didn't know because i had never been to europe so really really cool when we got there and i can show some of these pictures i'm not going to show absolutely all the pictures that i got because at least one or two of these does show things that are kind of behind the scenes things and I don't really want to accidentally show those off so this is going to be like the outside of the office and actually just us walking around the regular office this isn't going to be showing the major work area at least when there was actually work that was going on because the, the way they have their schedule there is actually like super laid back and show which is pretty awesome where you just show up for work you get to eat lunch all together which that was unusual their lunches were really good but it just was a little bit weird because I've never had a job where that's like been a thing where you get like everybody together and just have a big lunch and kind of hang out together. Uh, usually it's, you know, you eat whatever your food is here in the U.S. and then you go right back to work. So maybe you get a couple of minutes to talk to co-workers or whatever it might be. But yeah, that, that was super nice there. Uh, all the food they served us was really good too. They had really good food every day that we were there and a, and a lot of food too. I was surprised at that. I wasn't sure how much like food or anything I would need to buy if I was going to be going out to restaurants or whatever but it turned out way way less than what I thought because it was like you're there and you're eating like all the time at least that's that was the experience for me and it was it was really cool to hang out and talk to everybody there we then got to play our first session of Rogue Core, which was really cool too I can't talk very much about that for a couple reasons uh, one is that the game is still in a very uh, experimental state. It's functional and it worked really well when we were playing it, with a few exceptions, I believe, uh, the other group that was playing, because we had eight people there, so two four-man groups. And my group was able to actually play the game without too many trouble. The only problem was Lazy started getting like a bunch of frame tanks on his a little bit, and he was the host of our group. So that was just something that they were already aware of and something that could happen, but it only happened for a little bit. Uh, with the other group that was playing, they did have the game crash, I believe, twice. So that made it a little bit more difficult for them because that just resetted everything. But we did get to try it out and we got to see like all the art design of it. We got to hear some of the music from it. We got to see some of the new updates for Season 5. Season 5, we actually got to see more of the second day that we were actually there at the offices than the first day, which was perfectly fine. Uh, there was a lot of really cool stuff there. Rogue Core, I will say, is looking very good in my opinion. The sound design is fantastic, as you would kind of expect from Ghost Ship. It, it is really good and definitely different from uh, regular DRG. The gameplay is a bit different as well, which is really cool. It still has the same um, like foundation that Deep Rock has, which is by no means a bad thing. That's really good. 
And then it has uh, more added on to there, like you would kind of expect from a roguelike game, which they've already said and shown in pictures. There is also going to be new enemies, as you would kind of expect in a new game like this. And they look really, really cool. I can't tell you exactly what they're going to look like, but we did actually have uh, quite a few uh, placeholders for different things too, which honestly made the game experience that much better. And I hope somebody took pictures of the original uh, placeholders that they have for some of the new enemies because they were incredible in what they made. Basically, like if you had the skeleton or at least the framework of a creature, but you didn't actually have the skin on it. So very cool. I, I actually really like that. That was really awesome. Uh, the new animations, there is even more animations in this game and they look fantastic. One of them is my absolute favorite out of any of the weapons in DRG or in the new Rogue Core. I, it looked really cool. But yeah, we got to try that out. And then we went out for dinner right after that too, because yeah, we got there, had lunch, went through all of like the, the testing of Rogue Core, got to see more of the office. And then we went right out to dinner, which they treated us to a very nice dinner and a massive dinner that I ate way too much food on. We went to a restaurant that was originally a bakery during the day and then it served as a restaurant during the night which was really cool bread was really good there and then they served us a lot of food it was like a seven course meal or something everybody sat down on a super long table as well i was sitting at the end of it next to sniss and then directly across from me was mickle the lead game designer uh, and then there was also mike there who was also uh, heavily involved in much of the the game making process as well and the balancing process and uh, that that was really fun. The main problem with me being next to those two, though, is that the next day we were going to be doing Q&A of all your questions uh, that the community had asked about Rogue Core or that you had about Rogue Core. And Mickle and Mike basically answered like all of my questions that I wanted to ask, like right there at dinner. Uh, and then some even afterward. Anyway, dinner was really good. First thing we had were the oysters. I don't know if I said that already. Those were interesting. I'd never had regular oysters before. I'd only had deep fried oysters because American, you know, they, they were fine. We had like a, a, sh a little wooden bowl shot thing of like mushroom soup. That was actually pretty good too. I don't know what the heck it was. I couldn't fully understand the, the girl that was uh, telling us everything because every meal they would explain what we were eating and uh, how they made it themselves. A lot of the stuff that they had there was like uh, reused or repurposed into some other food that they had. So we had that and then we had some sort of like mushroom cheese burger thing. I don't know exactly what it was. It was really good though. Then we had like this pork neck thing. It was pork neck plus heart and something else. I think it was liver but I don't remember. Th that was actually pretty decent too. It was like fried I think or maybe it was just baked. I'm, I'm not entirely sure but it was like very lean bacon when I was eating it, so that was fine. We had some noodles with this, which had some sort of tomato sauce on them. They were pretty good, and I figured like right then would be like the last part of the meal. At least that was my understanding. And Mickle told me, no, there's going to be like a, at least another meal with probably some cheese after that, and then some sort of like uh, basically like an entree, and then probably two desserts. And I was like, how much food are we getting here? Because <laughs> I was pretty much full by the end of the noodles. That, that we just had. And then they brought us fish, which I think was cod. The, the the lady there kept saying it was lion something. I don't know if that was like what it's called there because it seemed like none of us could really understand what she had said. I think it was cod though, and it was really good. That was probably the best fish that I've ever had, uh, which is interesting because I usually don't really care for fish that much, but th this one was really, really good. I ate the whole thing. Then we had like lemon ice on spoons. It was supposed to be like a palate cleanser. That was nice too. And then for dessert, we had tiramisu with some chocolate mousse, I think, and some whipped cream on it. And the tiramisu had been soaked in coffee and vodka before that. Um, it, that was really good too. Yeah, but that that was all like way, way too much food. After that, me and Mist walked back to the uh, actual hotel, which wasn't too far away. The restaurant was actually closer to the hotel than like their office was. So that was kind of nice. We also got to see a lot of Copenhagen from this, tour a lot of Copenhagen, and I got to talk to a lot of these people too. Mist was super cool. If you're unaware of Mist, he makes a whole lot of really cool artwork for DRG. But yeah, support that guy. He's he's awesome. He makes so much cool stuff and was super fun to talk to. And then also at the, the restaurant, that's when we were told that Denmark has a very high level of trust where you can just kind of leave your stuff wherever and people won't mess with it which was pretty cool and it, it seemed to be pretty true when, it's, when we were just walking around the city. Uh, there really wasn't any sort of crime or anything that was going on. 
there wasn't like everybody was just super polite and very nice to one another so that was really cool to see actually we were trying to steal somebody's bag because dwarf furious had left his at the the restaurant and we were going to be trying to take it back but uh, i went to grab some other bag and that wasn't his luckily we got we grabbed the right bag so if something does get stolen and you're in denmark maybe an american tourist stole it like i tried to then we headed back to the hotel i tried to sleep i was way too full i woke up at like 3 a.m couldn't go back to sleep laid in bed until the the next day made the mistake of going downstairs to eat uh breakfast which again shouldn't have done that in the first place that was like way too much food i should have just skipped it and then we went back to the office where they were going to show us a bunch of the stuff coming in season five which sadly i missed some of that because of eating all that food uh, it kind of made me sick so when people were kind of getting to see some of the season five stuff that was uh, being tested, being experimented with. I didn't get to see all of it, at least right away. I was downstairs throwing up in their bathroom, so I think I was the only content creator that threw up in the ghost ship office. I guess that's something I can gloat about, maybe. <laughs> then after that, I, I was feeling much better, and the rest of the day went really well. We went upstairs, we got to see a lot of what was going on in Season 5, and more of Rogue Core stuff, so we got to see more art design, which everybody working on the art and the animations and uh, the various modeling was really cool, really excited to be working on that, which is really awesome to see. We did get to see the new enemy types that are going to be appearing in Season 5, but I can't tell you what they are. They are going to be really, really cool though, I can tell you that much. And I, I couldn't even really tell you if I wanted to exactly what they're going to look like anyway, because a lot of them still had placeholder stuff on them, and a lot of that was going to be subject to change. Being there with Ghost Ship, and being in the office with everybody. It, it was very apparent of how they kind of go about everything. They are extremely transparent about anything that you want to ask them. It's just that they don't want to necessarily promise something and not have it there because a lot of their process on making new seasons or making new stuff to go into Deep Rock was very much, we're going to have an outline of what we kind of want to do here. We're going to put a bunch of stuff in there and then once we get to the point where we kind of can't put any more in there or things aren't working quite right, then we're going to cut those out and just focus on what is working and what we can do because that makes the most amount of sense, which was a, a really cool process to actually see. And it was a very practical process, in my opinion, of how they went about doing it. So that, that made total sense to me. Then we got to see some other things that may not be in the game. I will give you a little hint, though. If you ever see like a QR code on any of their artwork that they decide to release, be sure to scan that. It's it's pretty entertaining. After that, me and four of the other creators were on their anniversary stream and we got to hang out and talk with them, which was really cool. We had about 10 minutes each uh, between one another. So a very fun chat there. And then upstairs, uh, Mikkel and Soren were getting ready to announce everything that we've seen in season five. And there is going to be a lot of stuff in season five. There was a lot of stuff that was written on a big whiteboard there too that was planned for it. And then plenty of memes written on there too, as well as uh, new potential games. So I'm still looking forward to whenever we get Dwarf Dwarf Revolution. We'll have to see when that one comes out. Uh, they, had, they had a lot of joke things just around the office in general, which was really cool to see. It was a, a very cool work environment. After we went through all that, and at least for us content creators, we were sitting upstairs watching this go live while we were there. Or you could go and hang out and kind of just stay outside of the area where Soren and Mikkel were explaining everything. You could take pictures there too, which was really cool. It was really cool to actually see their area of how they went about everything. Their building was also a lot bigger than what I was expecting. I didn't know exactly how big it would be, but their building was an old barn that had been converted where it had like a garage that had been converted, which is where we were getting to test Rogue Core, and that's where the live stream was set up. But then you also had the upstairs area, which had the kitchen and the main eating area, as well as the hangout area. And then they had their loft over on the other side, which is where everybody was that was working on any of the Deep Rock games with just a bunch of PC setup. And it was pretty full, but it wasn't really packed. You still had plenty of room to move around in there, which was really nice. After that wrapped up, then we went on to the big old pizza party that they had planned there, which was also really cool. Pizza party, they had a bunch of different pizzas there. The pizza in Denmark was a little bit different than in the US, at least that I'm used to. Uh, I had two pizzas there and both of them were really good, although I'm pretty sure the one made me kind of sick too, because that was kind of unfortunate since I ate it like the day before I flew back, so the flight back, I just didn't feel good at all. The, the actual pizza that we had at Ghost Ship was really, really good. We also had plenty of uh, drinks there, which were awesome, and Drilling in the Name of was actually working as the bartender there, so he made a whole bunch of different drinks for everybody, which was really cool to see. And uh, the Leaf Lover special, I would recommend, that one was really, really good. Kind of weird to say that, but it was. It was actually fantastic. If you haven't seen that video, 
check out his video. I'm going to try to link that down below as well. And we got to hang out there for quite a while. And then I believe it was me and uh, Explorian that walked back to the hotel after a bit. Some of the others stayed around for quite a bit longer. Uh, I believe Drilling stayed around for quite a while because he was kind of bartending for like everybody. And I believe uh, Sniss also stayed a, a bit longer there. Everybody was super fun to talk to though. All the content creators, all the people working there. We were getting to hang out a lot throughout those days, so that was really cool. Went back and then fell asleep, and the next day we got up, and this was the last day that we were actually going to go to the ghost ship offices. This was like a shorter day that they usually have. We got to play test more of Rogue Core, and it had been tweaked a little bit from the last time we played it, as well as uh, not all of the things were functioning when we first got to play it, so those got tweaked and we could actually try them out, which was really awesome. Mostly we were hanging out with some of the other crew that day. We were hanging out with uh, Mike, Mark, Aaron, who are all super cool guys. Uh, very fun to talk to. Sadly, the whole time that we were there, Robert wasn't there. The the voice of Mission Control, which I was kind of hoping to at least hear him a little bit. So th that was a little bit of a bummer, but it, it was really cool getting to meet everybody else there and actually get to talk to everybody else there too. There's so many cool people that work at Ghost Ship. Uh, we got to talk to, at least I got to talk to, I think just about everybody for at least like half an hour at a time. And it was it was really awesome. After that, or kind of d during the middle of Rogue Corps, we got served lunch and we had fried chicken that day, which was kind of funny. Uh, the, the rest of the days we had more um, unusual things, at least for us. That was more, I guess, like traditional uh, Denmark food. And all of that was really good. But I mean, fried chicken was also really good that we had that day. I think it was like fried chicken and baked potatoes. So yeah, pretty classic American like food. And that was really good. Then we went back, tested the rest of Rogue Corps. And then we went out and we went to explore the, the rest of the city, basically, where we stopped at the old Irish pub in Copenhagen. That place was really cool, too. The vibes were really cool there. I, I liked hanging out there. And then basically, like, the ghost ship guys had their own things that they were doing throughout the rest of the day. So we hung out with them until, like, 3 in the afternoon. They headed out and then we headed out. And uh, we just basically went around exploring Copenhagen. We went to the Burger Palace place that uh, a lot of them eat around there, too which had pretty good burgers too. They, they actually had a lot of different food there, a lot of different restaurants throughout there too. I was really surprised by that. We stopped at like a couple of shops, went in there and checked them out. And then I think after the Burger Palace, uh, Drilling and Mist, we're gonna be going and checking out another location that they wanted to check out real quick. Well, me, Sniss, and Explorian ended up going and trying to find the metro station so that we could head back to the the hotel which actually wasn't that big of a deal which actually was super easy the the metro station there is very clean which is unusual i, I guess i've never really been in a whole lot of like subway stations though so the the trains also weren't particularly like super crowded or anything we could get in and get out super easy and yeah made, made it back to the hotel that day and then the day after that, for Saturday, you could do whatever the heck you wanted, which was really cool that Ghost Ship let us do that. And thank you guys so very much again for allowing us to be there, hang out with you guys, and actually hang out in Copenhagen for an extra day that we really didn't need to. I mean, they didn't really need to pay for this. They could have just said, okay, well, the tour's over and now you go back. But no, you had an extra day in Copenhagen if you wanted to do anything there. So I went to the Copenhagen Zoo and took a bunch of pictures there. That was actually the only day I actually slept really well. Funny enough, I got woken up by uh, house cleaning and then I was like oh okay hang on I gotta leave went downstairs um, I was like all right I want to go like check out the zoo near I want to see what kind of animals they have in Denmark because I figured maybe it'd be different than the things that they have in the US it wasn't too far away it was like a 15 minute cab right away and then I hung out at the zoo for like three four hours of time taking pictures of stuff there was a lot of really cool animals there uh, I actually took so many pictures that I ran out of pictures with my camera so I took a few more with my phone and I was getting kind of low on space on that too. Next time I go, I'm gonna need like a, a better camera and some other stuff that I have planned because this last time I, there was a little bit of uh, rough things. Like my phone didn't work in Denmark at all. It, it did so long as I had uh, internet connection. So I could still use like Google Maps to walk around the place. But other than that, it was like, I don't know. I can't call anybody if I wanted to. It doesn't work there. That's probably something that I should look into when I go back to Denmark, hopefully. Uh, Definitely sounded like they had plans for that, so that was really cool. And yeah, after that, then I went back, got some pizza from a little, like, uh, food truck that was about two or three blocks away from the actual hotel. It was super misty that day, too. 
which looked really cool. The fog was just rolling in everywhere. Uh, it, it looked really awesome. Had that pizza. That pizza was fantastic, but I think I ate too much of it and maybe it didn't agree with me because I was sick then and then uh, didn't really feel like going out for anything with with everybody else. So I missed some of the like goodbyes and hanging out with them. I, I wish I could have because they were all the all the content creators were super fun to hang out with. So like, I do kind of regret that, but at the same time, I, I didn't feel way great. And then I also needed to get up early for my flight because my flight back, I had to be at the airport at about 3.30 AM so that I could get there on time. Copenhagen airport was by far the best airport, like out of all of them, easily. It was the best setup and the easiest to navigate and just the nicest overall. So yeah, if you ever get stuck in the Copenhagen airport, it's actually really good. I, funny enough, I actually did get stuck at least on the way in because I couldn't find the currency exchange. Because I found one and you couldn't exchange currency there. I found another one and that one was under construction. So I asked the construction guys there, like, where's the currency exchange? They pointed me further down and I had to go to like a Thai bank to get like money exchanged there. Their money is actually really cool though. And weirdly enough, it like changes sizes depending on how much you have. So like, uh, at least with the bills that I had, I had like a 200, 150. And they gradually, I guess, get bigger the more you go up or get smaller the more you go down. So it's actually kind of easy to figure out which one you got. I also got a bunch of really cool coins from them too. So uh, yeah, definitely keeping those as souvenirs. I definitely have more, but those were all in my bag too. And those did get lost in Paris. So the flight out of Copenhagen was actually really nice. It was super short and I landed in Paris, France. And then uh, Paris, France was awful. That, that was the worst airport out of all of them that I ended up being in. Cause I only had an hour layover between, um, between my flight back to the state and that was not enough time to get through it. Getting in, the plane was actually a little bit early, but then there was another plane trying to take off, which basically made it so we landed there on the time that we were supposed to. And then just trying to get through customs took like an hour. And that was me trying to run ahead of people and push people out of the way basically so that I could get to the front uh, a little bit quicker because like my flight was already boarding then. And even with doing that and rushing from one side of the uh, airport to the other and taking a elevator and then taking a bus and then taking their uh, shuttle, monorail, whatever the heck you want to call it. Over there, I still ended up missing my flight. I got there and the plane had already closed. Uh, there was still like 10 minutes before like the takeoff, but they wouldn't let me enter at all. So that was, uh, that, that was kind of disappointing once I actually got there. Had to go and get my flight rescheduled. And yeah, there, there was a lot of very upset people in line with me. That was, that was kind of entertaining to see. I wasn't so much upset as like tired and I just wasn't feeling good that day. So I was just kind of like, okay, whatever. Then they decided to send me to Chicago, which took a little while to actually get to where I needed to be so that I could fly to Chicago. But at least I had like two hours to wait in Paris, France. So that was fine. The flight to Chicago was pretty long. That, that took quite a while. And Chicago's airport was the second worst airport that I was in, just behind Paris, France's. Not set up very well either. I had, I think, a two and a half hour layover in Chicago, but it took me about an hour and a half to actually get through Chicago to get to where my flight was. My flight sort of got delayed and then it got undelayed, which was sort of weird. It got delayed by like 20 minutes and they're like, oh, wait, no, we're not delayed. So hop on. And then I got back to my state, which was around like, 9.30 or so by the time I was getting off the plane, found out that they had lost my luggage. So my luggage was still in Paris, France. It's not currently there. It was shipped to the States, so it should be arriving sometime soon, hopefully to me. And then I had a two hour drive back to my house. So I had originally started my morning at about 1 a.m. in uh, Denmark time. And I had got back to my house and went to sleep at almost midnight, my, my time, <laughs> mountain time in the US. So I was awake for a very long time. I didn't really get any sleep on the plane. That was the only part of that trip that honestly kind of sucked was just the the flight back. The flight there was really good. Actually being in Denmark was super cool. Again, talking with everybody was super nice. It was super fun to speak with everybody. And yeah, it, it was it was really, really awesome. I'm definitely looking forward to all the stuff that Ghost Ship has in store for us both in terms of what they're doing in their own studio and games and what they're doing in the publishing side. They are extremely transparent about everything. You could ask them about anything and they would give you a very straight answer. Uh, <laughs> at least if you ask Mikkel, Mikkel would tell you exactly what he was thinking whenever uh, you would ask him anything, which was uh, very nice, very refreshing. And then also like Mike and Soren were also very uh, transparent about that as to kind of what they had planned or what was going on and uh, what they may or may not have planned at any given time. So once again, 
Very special thank you to absolutely everybody that I got to meet there, uh, all the content creators. Again, those will be linked all in the description below. And it was so very nice to meet all of you. I, I really had a fun time there, and you guys made it even better. As well as all of Ghost Ship Gaming, too. You guys made the whole trip awesome. Thank you guys so very much for sending us out there. It was so, so cool. It was so very nice of you as well. And I am definitely looking forward to it if I ever get to go back as well. That, that would be awesome. I would love to. As well as I'm looking forward to all the new stuff that's coming out too. Season 5, Rogue Core, updates to DRG Survivor, any of the new published games. I've actually just been playing Spell Rogue quite a bit because I just didn't really want to make videos when I first got here, but I was like, ah, I kind of want to do something. So I've been playing that a bunch and having a lot of fun with that too. Definitely looking forward to absolutely everything. And again, we are going to be doing another video like this uh, after this once I get everything actually shipped back to me. Then we're going to be talking about Rogue Core and Season 5 and all the updates. We're going to be going over some of this stuff. But once again, it's going to kind of be like a video like this where I can't really say a whole lot of information on stream because it may not be accurate when it actually goes out. So again, thanks everybody. And always remember, rock and stone, take care. Have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you next time. Also, tomorrow, first time I'm going to be streaming uh, since I got back. So that should be fun. If you want to hang out and ask me anything about the trip in particular, Feel free to. I'm pretty open about that, except for like saying people's exact names or something. Not gonna do that. But <laughs> anything else that you would like to ask uh, on the trip, feel free to. Same goes with any stream because there there was a lot that happened throughout those days. So this is a very brief summary of like the five days I was there. I think six days. I don't remember how long I was. The last couple days have kind of blurred together. So so yeah, very fun. But a uh, lot of stuff going on uh, behind the scenes and things that I didn't mention here. So if you'd like to hear more, feel free to show up to one of the streams and ask me that and we can kind of talk. Uh, you guys have a great rest of your day. I'll talk to you next time. Bye bye, everybody.